This video is brought to you by Connext. Connext is a cross-chain protocol that lets you build cross-chain applications and experiences in a secure way. Rob and I really enjoy their tech because they don't add any new security assumptions on top of the connected change as they don't rely on an external validator set or an oracle. Security is definitely paramount in DeFi, so we're excited to work with Connext. Hope you enjoy this video. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to ECC Live here from outside of the media room because, you know, things get a little spicy sometimes. But here today with Robert and Michael from Liquidy. I remember our first, one of our first interviews on DeFi Slate back in 2020 was with Robert when they just launched. That was uh, a bit, a bit uh, of a throwback now, but it, it's been great to see them launch their V2 here in Paris. Uh, I just want to give a quick uh, introduction to Connects Network, uh, allowing users to swap between different chains uh, without any trust assumptions like other bridges. Um, also, no no reliance on on any validator sets, and they've got some really cool cross-chain governance tooling as well as a, uh, account and chain abstraction tooling for DApps. Um, so, without further ado, do gonna jump right in uh, and let these two handsome gentlemen introduce themselves and what they're building hey everybody hi Andy I'm happy to be on your show I'm Robert Lauko founder and head of research at liquidity um, I founded liquidity roughly three, uh, three and a half years ago and we just announced uh, version 2 here at ECC hi Michael um, I joined Liquidity one and a half years ago. Um, I'm now leaving the company. And I think probably you know Liquidity, maybe I give a short background. Liquidity was launched two years ago. Since then, we have the protocol has managed more than 4.5 billion in loans. And yeah, luckily, in, in the last times, uh, we're still uh, growing um, despite kind of the, the bear market. And we are almost hitting an all time high in, in troves. So that's really cool to see. But we're here to talk about V2. And yeah, you want to give a pitch? So should I introduce it? Maybe what I can say before, before Robert gives a rundown. Did we lose the video? No. Um, I mean, since V2, we learned a lot. Uh, we listened also to, to the users. And I think the two things uh, we have seen is that Stake DEF has become a reality, so that's something we want to address uh, with V2. Um, the PEC is also something we want to look at. And uh, the third thing, uh, I think, which limits all of the, most of the stable coins out there because they are dependent on the borrow demand, so the stable coins are only minted if people borrow, is a bit the scalability. So in a bear market, if nobody borrows, there is not a lot of supply. So these are three key, three key things we have seen, uh, we have researched, and now we have announced it here at ECC. So really with the goal, so we're still in development and uh, plan launch in 2024, but we want to grab the brightest mind in, in the space to give us feedback, to help us improve it, and also get the user feedback, um, yeah, to get the best products out there for staked ETH believers and holders. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to uh, tell you a bit more about how this system is supposed to work. So it all started with analyzing the stablecoin trilemma, which basically says that you cannot be scalable, decentralized, and robust or uh, yeah, resilient at the same time. So we looked into it and found out that there were already some interesting solutions out there with like protocols that had their own kind of reserve, something like kind of a decentralized version of the maker spec stability module where people could uh, come in, mint their stable coin at uh, one dollar, uh, like kind of as if uh, it's always worth one dollar. You can mint it like by providing some volatile asset and also you can redeem it basically uh, whenever you want. But the problem with those protocols was that they had, they needed some hedging mechanism to make sure that the reserve asset, which is volatile, kind of always remains above, like in total value above the outstanding stable coin supply in order to guarantee this redemption facility. So we looked into that and we came to the conclusion that we need to make this hedging, like to make sure that the, the system can offer like a hedging product to other users, which is inherently more attractive than what is currently out there. And we found out that by adding principal protection to the hedging product, we can build something like a leveraged 
um, product which is not just interesting because it has an amplified upside on ease or stake deed, but it also comes with a kept downside. Like it, uh, it, it makes it also suitable for the risk averse uh, investor. And with this product, uh, we also had a second innovation which made sure that the protocol itself doesn't have to pay too much to guarantee this principle. Like uh, it's kind of a, an insurance mechanism, but instead of just paying out the insurance whenever somebody claims it, uh, we have found a neat way of integrating a secondary market and a subsidy mechanism which basically makes sure that you can sell your position on the secondary market at least for its principal value. And by integrating these two innovations, principal protection and this neat way of making the insurance uh, cost efficient for the system, we uh, are now confident that we can solve the stablecoin trilemma and build a stablecoin that really scales with user demand. Yeah, th I think it's quite interesting to uh, to hear more and more about how kind of the the rumblings of the last year, year and a half have have kind of changed the the mental models and the focuses of kind of building out the uh, the resilience of liquidity. And, you know, this has been a recurring uh, theme from a lot of the conversations that I've had today. I've you know, I've heard a, a, a lot of pivots, uh, you know, hard pivots changing in, in, in entire models. Um, you know, we've we've had a pivot. So uh, there's been quite a few uh of these tests, if you will, that, that each bear market kind of puts on the protocols. Um, and, you know, it's good to see that you guys have thought through about creating a better incentive incentive designed to kind of solve that trilemma, right? Because we saw a lot of kind of downfalls uh, in, in various stable coins over, over the last 18 months. Um, and frankly, kind of iterating on these, on these mechanisms uh, is gonna be crucial for the next bear market so that you guys will be extremely resilient uh, and kind of ready for that. Um, now with V2, um, you mentioned that it's going to be, you know, a work in progress. What is that? Um, what does the kind of test net look like? What does the feedback process look like? How can our, how can our community get involved, give feedback and, and uh, participate in, uh, in V2 now? Yes, I think the easiest thing is really to follow our Twitter and we have a separate Discord channel. So first, we will try to, to bring people to specific problems and then open up more and more. As I said, there's a, uh, that's a work in progress. So August and September, we will look at different things. We do some UX testing uh, to understand, does the product work for retail? How could it work? We are doing extensive modeling of the dynamics because it's a whole new dynamic. Uh, we have some pricing uh, stuff we do. So I think that's how we want to approach it. I think we're a small team. We can't just open up and kind of uh, cater to the entire community, but bring in people and, and kind of uh, grow the, the builders around the, the core team that is already there. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool. Yeah, it's good to see. So next couple of months, there'll be opportunities for specific kind of challenges or specific missions, should we say, to kind of try out the product, give, give feedback. Now, just a more friendly question: Like, are you guys proud that LUSD survived the stablecoin carnage? Like, how do you feel about just the overall, uh, yeah, let's say resilience of, of of the mechanism? Yeah, definitely. I mean, LUSD has proven to work quite well under various market conditions and very difficult market conditions as well. So, I think it was like one month uh, into our launch when there was this flash crash and uh, more than three hundred positions were liquidated. One very big position wasn't. Uh, I'm sure some of you will know which one. But anyway, like it, uh, just the, si the protocol proved to be very resi resilient in those uh, scenarios. And then also later down the line, when uh, the bear market hit the whole crypto space, uh, liquidity just uh, kept on working. And uh, even though, I mean, the LUSD peg has not always been completely perfectly stable, but um, overall, I think uh, yeah, it has proven to to work quite well under many different situations. Yeah, maybe J just to add uh, on that, I mean, it's amazing to see um, how also the, the value that uh, you at the end set out how, uh, to which you wanted to cater, to which users, the really resilience, the decentralized front end, how this was really visionary. And we are kind of the only decentralized stablecoin, major stablecoin kind of catering to that need to be uh, unstoppable. Um, and also have these great properties. We just recently were rated A by, by Blue Chip, and uh, I think there's only Gemini and Poxos that uh, kind of cater in that. So I think that uh, yeah made us uh, really proud. 
and yeah the, and also seeing that growth so i think that that's really an achievement yeah, i i haven't been there but but it makes me proud too yeah I and mean, that's what i was getting <laughs> at good good vibes right yeah it's 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 good growth um now unfortunately i actually was not able to make it to stable summit i just got into paris here on sunday um but i'm sure there was some really really great talks innovations and kind of just mental loops that opened um, so I, I know that you guys were there. I know that you unveiled V2. What other cool innovations outside of LUSD um, in the stablecoin market did you see? Or kind of what was the general uh, theme of conversation? Was it around the resilience? Was it around the, the peg? Was it around that kind of, um, you know, making it through the next bear? Kind of what were some of the conversations and uh, interesting innovations that you guys saw? I mean, one interesting conversation was about like censorship resistance and uh, how different stablecoins uh, tackle this problem. I mean, many stablecoins have some elements of governance or elements of mutability, while let's say our LUSD is uh, completely immutable. And uh, yeah, there was a lively debate on that um, with our very own token breeds defending kind of the censorship resistance standpoint, which was, I think, a very insightful discussion. I mean. Of course, there are trade-offs everywhere, so um, and many different views on that. Um, so that was one thing, and then of course, Go was unveiled on the same day, I guess, uh, which uh, was also a big uh, achievement and an interesting project to watch out for. Yeah, and overall, I think Stake Deep is a big topic, and. Yeah, just recently there are so many stablecoin launching. So if you talk to people, it's kind of okay. We have a stablecoin, and it doesn't th that and that. So uh, that was interesting s to see. I still think we need more innovation. You know, uh, I felt there is a lot of the design that is recycled. So also, uh, liquidity is used for a lot of the staked ETH uh, protocol, which is cool. to see this is a battle-tested design. We're now a top three most forked protocol. Um, but I would love to see more innovation like we have seen with Curve USD. I think that was really something new, something we try now to go from a CDP based model to a reserve based model. Um, yeah, so overall, uh, I would wish that there would be even more experimentation, more bold moves in the stablecoin space. Yeah, and I think, frankly, that that kind of stuff happens when speculation is a bit more, uh, let's just say, ripe. Um, you know, people tend to fork and deploy just experiments more. So I'm sure we'll see new ones, and I'm sure we'll see some s succeed and, and pass the test of time. And also, you know, we'll see some kind of uh, uh, slowly kind of dwindle down or, or fail out. But you brought up Curve USD, which brings me to an, another interesting point about some DeFi mechanisms, which... When we got introduced to Compound and Aave back in 2020, and even with uh, Liquidity there shortly after, the liquidation mechanisms for these uh, collateralized positions was much better than trading on a BitMEX or a Binance Futures, right? You got liquidated and you often lost just 10%, in some cases 5% of your collateral, you know, and, and, and you had some time to kind of pay back your debt. Curve just launched Curve USD with this soft liquidation model. I also just talked to ZK Land a money market on Starknet, which um, basically is taking Aave's model, but let's say your health factor drops to 0.98, you can only get liquidated for 2%. Or if it's at 0.99, you can only get liquidated for 1% of your collateral. I'm curious about your thoughts, Robert, on the general uh, transition from like harder liquidation mechanisms to more soft liquidation mechanisms in DeFi, if that's healthy, if that's better for users, and kind of what that means also from like a protocol level. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I like the innovation behind Curve USD and how it gradually like unwinds the position and leverage, leverages it up when the price goes up again. But I think it's also kind of a bit of an opinionated view on it because maybe some people, they do not want to deleverage or leverage it uh, based on or in those conditions. So I think there is also maybe a way of uh, having both words where you have... Uh, just a protocol that maybe that is more open and then around it let's say a DeFi saver or some uh, yeah automation tooling which does it uh, like that you have like an external um, tool that basically manages the position for you according to the rules that you may predefine uh, because as far as I know with Curve it's like rather like enshrined in the system which is nice because I guess it's more efficient because yeah probably also more gas efficient so there are trade-offs but uh, yeah I really like the innovation uh, that's happening there and uh, yeah I, I'm sure that we'll see more of the, this type of uh, yeah protocols coming out in the future 
Yeah, as a uh, as a DeFi degen myself, I am a fan of the soft liquidations. I'll, I'll, t I'll <laughs> tell you that much. <laughs> Try to avoid those in general, though. You sleep much better now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, kind of wrapping up here on the ethos of liquidity since the beginning. Um, you know, you guys, you mentioned here, Michael, the decentralized front end, the IPFS. Kind of, I, I, I remember going on on liquidity back in the day, and even still, you can kind of choose which which front end that you want to basically use. For for your, um, you know, f for your positions, uh, has has that ethos just been, you know, you know, enshrined in your in your beliefs, Robert? Is that something that uh, the entire team kind of carries over, um, you know? And how does that kind of permissionless, censorship resistant, decentralized ethos kind of play into your day by day choices? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of uh, the core of our DNA, so to say, now that we, we are, I think, really the most uh, immutable protocol, um, maybe except for Uniswap. Um, but uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, we need to defend it sometimes. I mean, there are also kind of people who would want to push us to become more open, to include like other collateral assets or to like open up for, for like changes, but then you need to be kind of a bit uh, stubborn and, and just defend adamant and defend your position that no, it's probably not the right thing to do, even though maybe in the short run, this means some, uh, some limitations, but I think in the long run, um, this will pay off because yeah, I mean, immutability is, is I think also the core principle that uh, like smart contract as a concept has offered to the world and uh, we should not like give it up just so easily yeah. any uh, closing thoughts he here Michael about your experience with liquidity so far you're you're in front of Robert so you got to be uh, a little bit nice <laughs> yeah sure no I, I'm still uh, love the project I, I think that's how I want DeFi um, C to be built especially the decentralization part you know um, because in the future I think the there will be only two ways, you know, either you go the more regulated license path and or you, you go really more the decentralized path, which kind of we try to further pioneer. I think the in between will get more difficult and difficult. And that's why I like we have the, that we have this DNA, that we have this differentiation and it really pays off. You know, we see more and more people um, uh, allocating LUSD to the treasury to just diversif diversify the risk and LUSD has kind of these unique properties no other stablecoin has. Uh, yeah, and uh, I hope uh, with we, we too we can follow that path and uh, create now something unique for the state EF ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, I think getting ahead of that kind of LSD phi uh, realm and narrative being a player in that is going to help TVL users and overall kind of community uh, community uh, spirit and um, yeah I, I look forward to doing another interview sometime either next year at ECC or online once v2 is out do some uh, video tutorials and things like this for our audience so thank you guys for coming on and it's been a pleasure yeah thanks a lot it was fun yeah thanks a lot for being on your show <laughs>